Uh, Tuesday, October 6th, the advanced class as we get into Glove and the Lions and other fascinating things. Uh, let's see, book report is due tomorrow. All kinds of fun. Good luck with your sleeping tonight. Uh, Silver Wars continues um, to support. I will bribe you for every dollar you bring in. I will give you a B point. And then we're going to be making this entry poetry terms, which we'll get to here shortly. With our poem that we had before, with the glove and the lines, go ahead, bring that one up, and then we'll follow along and figure out what we have. Uh, let's see, we had King Francis was a hard, this one, yeah. King Francis was a hardy king and loved a royal sport, and one day as his lions fought, sat looking on the court. The nobles filled the benches with the ladies and their pride, and amongst them sat the Count de Lourdes with one for whom he sighed. Truly, t'was a gallant thing to see that crowning show, valor and love and a king above, and the royal beasts below. We start off, well, where's our poem taking place? Tracing? Coliseum. Works for me. Uh, Coliseum y type thing, medieval times. And then we had characters. Uh, and mm -hmm. Jay Blanc, who's one of our characters we have in the poem so far? King Francis. King Francis, who's the, the leader y type person. Uh, Gates, another character. The lion. Not quite a character. They are in the poem, but I wouldn't actually say that they get to do any talking or growling and rowling. Yes? The Count Delors. I'd probably say Count Delors would probably count as more of a character. He's definitely going to end up doing something that's going to be in there. Uh, Catton, we have another person who's going to be a character. Um, the Duke of Burnley? Works for me. Uh, then we have the girl that he likes. Uh, and then so we had so there, choo, the monks and the twas. What is the monksting and the twasing mallet? <laughs> it was a week ago. So much more from there. Um, when it says monks, you know what word that's referring to? What it says twas. No, we'll come back to the comment. It was, I know. It's correct. You have the it was. And then the, the monks, you know what letter they chopped off? A. Nice little C. You lied to me, Mal. You knew the whole time. Uh, so you have a monks, and then you have it was. Ooh. Why did the poet cut those down and remove certain letters and then re glueify them, Zoe? To make it sound more medieval and old. Close. Although I do like medieval and old sounding things. That actually, was not the intention on this one, although that's kind of a legit thing. Uh huh. Fact check. It's like kind of like. Like the term like rolled off the tongue better? The syllable count. And so <coughs> the way it's written is it has to have a certain syllable beat as you go through it and you can count them. So that's what he was going for there. Um, the one for whom he sighed, what does it mean if there's one for Count Dolores and he sighed? And as you guys pointed out last week, um, yes, I sigh for many of you in here, but it's a whole different kind of sigh when I do my sign. When you guys raise your hand, I just go, that's not the sign he's doing. Aaliyah? Uh, he's falling in love. Yeah. We'll go with like, like. Let's not go love. That's a bad word. Uh, but there's definitely like, like. Maybe like, like, like if you want to go up that high. Uh, so it's a happy side. The whole Twitter, 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 Twitter. Full of heartbeat and stuff like that. As opposed to the my side. Like, oh, strangle, strangle, strangle. Uh, <laughs> so slightly different. And then gallant. Pride has two meanings. In our poem, Washed, you know, one of our two meanings of pride. It does mean a group of animals, you're correct. What kind of animals are pride? Um, are you asking me? No. What is it? Lions. It's correct. It would be a pride of lions where you have a whole group of them together. So he's comparing the, the ladies to a whole pride of lions. Plus, all of these girls are trying to impress all of the rich dudes, the, uh, the, the nobles and the counts and stuff like that. And so uh, because of that, they're trying to dress up. And what does it mean if you have pride? Uh, once again, to use my cross-country team, we have a new trophy that we have added over there uh, to which my cross-country girls now have a lot of pride in that trophy. So in that case, Kelly, what does pride mean? You're very confident in yourself. I can dig that. We are very confident in ourselves. I can roll with that. Uh, very happy of your accomplishments and stuff like that and the confidence. So here, the girls in their pride is because of the fact that they're trying to impress the, the dude folk. Uh, and so they're trying to pretty themselves up with the... The, the powdering, the, the stuff that goes on with the makeup. Uh, and so they're trying to impress them as much as possible. And when you have um, a bunch of females that are all trying to impress dudes, how are those females going to treat each other? 
Tracen. Terribly. Nice. Well, and that's where the rare comes in uh, because they're all attacking each other, uh, which will take us to farther in the poll because we had that exact same thing happening. We got through stanza two with you guys where it says, Ramped it. Well, this whole stanza is getting across one image, so let's find one image. Ramped and roared the lions with horrid laughing jaws. They bit, they glared, gave blows like beams of wind with their paws. With wallowing might and stifled roar, they rolled on one another. Till all the pit with sand and mane was in a thunderous smother. The bloody foam above the bars came whisking through the air. Said Francis then, Faith gentlemen were better here than there. Cole, what's up? what are we trying to get across with that whole stanza? Um, that where they are. Like, and where are they? In the, like, in the on the ground. Yeah. In the air. On no, the ground. On the ground. In the Colosseum. So they're in the middle of the Colosseum? Yeah. So they're so they're saying that, that where they where the humans are in the middle of the Colosseum. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And so they're saying better there than where. With all the ladies, like fighting. So they're saying it's better off to be down in the pit with the lions than up there with all the ladies. I like where you're going. <laughs> Not what the Pope's saying, but I fully say I agree. I would much rather be with the lions killing each other than with a whole... I tell my cross-country girls that all the time. I would rather be torn apart by lions than spend the afternoon with you. Um, that's how I coach. Um, but you're slightly off on this one. Uh, Catton? What they're saying is that the lions are fighting in the middle of the Colosseum. Yes. And they're saying... It's we're better here than there because down there we might get killed and up here we're safe. And where is the here that they are? Um, like up in the stands in the college. Yes, because what's happening down there? The lions are fighting and killing each other. Where Abby wants to hang out. It is correct. So <laughs> Abby's out there going, nice kitty, freaky. Uh, and so, because uh, Abby, what are the lions doing to each other? Fighting. Yes, and what happens when the lions fight enough? What happens to each lion? Nicely done, uh, which is not a good thing when the lions are attacking unless you're out there doing your, your, your cat petting. Uh, and so the fact there's little bits of cat fly, there's like bits of cat flying through the air, rare chunk goes through there. So that's why he's saying, hey, we're up here in the stands where there's not bits of people going flying, but down there there's lion bits going everywhere. Yes, dear? This is a really bad poem. It's not over yet. There's the good stuff coming. It's okay. Cats die. But not all the cats die. The strong cats don't. The weak cats die. So it's okay. Do uh, you guys know what horrid means? Yes, it describes this, this poem. poem. You're horrible people. You're not horrid, though. That's a little bit different. Wash? It's a shorter version of horrible. Yeah, and what does horrible mean? It means bad. And there's slightly different between horrid and, and horrible. Horrid is more uh, frightening and scary, and horrible can just be bad. I can call you a horrible child because you don't do your homework. That doesn't mean I'm scared of you in any way. It just means that you're really, really bad. Um, and horrid usually means a little bit of frightening stuff that goes along with it. Um, <coughs> gave blows like beams um, is going to be, ooh, is that a simile or a metaphor? Can they get? Um, it's a simile. How do you know? Has like nice. When I'm comparing what two things? Uh, blows and beams. Nice one. Do you know what the beam is they're talking about? No. That's very honest. Even when it says gave blows like beams, what beam are we referencing? Not like the Star Trek with the beaming up and the blah, 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 and you go flying. <laughs> <the air. laughs> Completely different blow than that one. Tracen. Um. So if your whacking stick was metal and yes. hitting someone in the face, you're on the right track except for the metal part. Uh, still wood. But the beams they're talking about are the, the beams they use like to hold up houses. Uh, if you have a basement and it's unfinished, and you look up there at the top of it, they have like these large beams that prevent the house from going <laughs> and falling down. That would be a beam. So it's this large wooden thing. So when it says they give blows like beams, what is that saying or what is that telling us about their hits? Johnny? They're so hard, it's like being hit by a two by four. <clears throat> Nicely done. Although that's more like a two by twelve, but yes, Whatever. you have the same idea. So something very hard, basically something that you know the Hulk would like, puny stick, and he would then use it to hit you. Um, so, shoo. Um, and you covered this when you hit the faith gentleman, better here than there. So the idea that in the, in the pit area, Abby, is it scary or not scary? Scary. Why? Because there's lions killing each other. Nice, you're done. So where is it we're better off being? In the like, stands. 
Are you sure? Yes. Okay, just making sure. Nice, we're done. Stanza three. So now we get to this one. Uh, fact check, we're going to get to you on this one because I think it gets a little bit better, so hopefully that relieves you. All right, so go ahead and go for this one. Uh, um, the Lord just love overheard the king, a beauteous, lively dam, dame. 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 Means girl, chick. It's like the old, like, 30s way. It's weird word. Uh, it's the weirdest ever. With smiling lips and sharp bright eyes, which always seemed the same, she thought the court, my lover is brave, as brave can be. He surely would do wondrous things to show his love for me. King, ladies, lovers, all look on. Vacation is divine. My group, my, my drop, my glove, to prove his love. Great glory will be mine. Nice well done. So a plan, a scheme is forged. Let me figure out what our scheme is. Delorge's love overheard the king, a beauteous, lively dame, with smiling lips and sharp, bright eyes, which always seemed the same. She thought the count, my lover, is brave as brave can be. He surely would do wondrous things to show his love of me. King, ladies, lovers, all look on. The occasion is divine. I'll drop my glove to prove his love. Great glory will be mine. Um, Mallet! You get to tag back in again, dear. Ower! Um, what, what, what does ower mean? It says... The Lord is love, o'er er the king, a beauteous, lively dame. What is o'er? You're right. And means a letter was dropped out. You know what letter was dropped out? A good, so, with strength and confidence hammer. Hit me, hit me with confidence like a hammer hammer. What's the letter? Because what's the word? Nice, well done. So we have that one gets dropped out there. Why would this simile cause me to have to hit you like a beam right across your facial region, uh, Machina? Because it says as brave as brave can be, but it's not really comparing the two things because they're the same. Well, one, you're right. They are the same thing. Plus, uh, brave, noun, adjective, it's verb. It's not a noun, it's a verb. <laughs> it is correct. So it's comparing an adjective to an adjective, so on multiple levels it's really bad. Yes? For the over thing, uh -huh. isn't it like you said it was supposed to make like less syllables, but over and over have the same amount of syllables. I know. In that case, I just I think it was just fanciness. I felt the same way on that one. So the other ones that made sense on this one, I'm not really positive on that one. I can try and make up something if it makes you feel better, but mm -hmm. I'm confused too. Yeah. Technically, it's comparing uh, the count to brave. Brave still like. Still, this is brave as brave can be, kind of comparing the count to bravery, and why are we comparing him to bravery? Because he's brave. Yeah, however you want to look at it, it's not going to be a strong one. Captain? Well, it, it also is comparing the count to, like, the bravest person there is, because it says as brave as brave can be, like, the bravest person. Is, it, is that what you want to go with? Well, it, sounds, <coughs> it kind of sounds like that's what they're trying to do. Like, it may not be exact wording, but that's what he's trying that's to do. That's what they're, they're reaching for? I can yes. go with that. Way to defend the poet. It's okay. They're dead, so we're fine now. I know, but it's a good poem. <laughs> I support you. Uh, then, let's see, we have the Jew, the Coliseum, the girl. Uh, the girl that the Count is in love with. She comes up with a plan in the poem. What is it she decides to do in the poem? Zoe? To drop her glove so the Count can back her. And I'm absolutely done. Uh, and where, where is she going to drop her glove? Floor. Close. On the floor of where? The Coliseum. It is correct. She's going to be dropping her glove on the floor of the Coliseum. I, I brought in my glove. Um, do you know why, why she drops her glove? Because there is the cultural significance. Can they get? That the lines are down there. You're on the right track. But why drop the glove in the first place? What, what, oh, what does glove dropping do? Uh, she wants him to give it back to her? Yes. Why? So he can be nice. <laughs> nice. This was the, uh, the early style of flirty flirty. Um, and so back before, you know, when hand-holding meant you were almost married. Um, what they would do is if you were a girl and you had winky winky eye towards a particular guy, uh, you, you would look at them and you had the, the dainty white gloves. I didn't have a white glove, so just use your imagination. This is a dainty white glove. Uh, you would pull off your glove, 
And then you would look at the guy that you have the winky winky eye, like, winky. <laughs> and you would drop the glove down there at his feet. And then you go like, oh, I dropped my glove. And then you would hold out the hand. <laughs> and then that's how you would find out. That hurts me cold. Um, and that's how you would find out if the guy liked you back. If he was like, oh, you dropped your glove. And he'd hand it back to you. would be like, oh, giggles. And then you would have the glove. And that was sort of like the way... It, Nowadays, you send a note that says, do you like me or do you like like me? And you have them check whichever box it is. They're like, I like, like, like you. And they make like their own box. And you're like, oh, giggles. Well, before they had the whole writing thing, you would use a glove. So she's deciding that she's going to uh, see whether or not he likes her because he's giving her the winky eye like the whole time. He's like, hey, you. Hey. And she's like, oh, this is going well. And so, but instead of just dropping it here... Where does she end up dropping it? Oh yeah, she's like, here's my glove. Oh! <laughs> and she throws it all the way over there. She's like, I dropped my glove. <laughs> now, the idea of dropping it all the way over there, why drop it yonder as opposed to right in front of him, Johnny? Because you, because you would have to really love her to go down to the lion pit and um, fight lions with the <laughs> Nicely done, with the like sharks with laser beams on their back. And so the idea that now when he jumps down there and he's like ninja punch, ninja punch, ninja punch, and then grabs the glove and is like ninja, and then comes back up and gives it to her. She was just like oh giggle giggle. Most importantly, who is going to realize that he likes her? The lion. Not the lion. The lion's lion are distracted right now. Can you get? The other girls. The all the other girls. In fact, that first stands with the ladies and their pride. So it's very important that all the other girls like, wow, that dude really likes you. And she's like, yeah. Uh, and so that's the important line we have. Dropping the glove. Then we get to stanza four and find out what kind of fun we have. Aaliyah. Can I read it? You may. She dropped her glove to prove his love and then looked at him and smiled. He bowed and in a moment leaped among the lions wild. The leap was quick, the, uh, the leap was quick, return was quick. He has regained his place, then threw the glove, but not with love, right in the lady's face. <laughs> By heaven, said Francis, rightly done, and he rose from where he sat. No love, quoth he, but vanity sets love a task like that. Nicely done. Ah, right, so we have, she dropped her glove to prove his love and looked at him and smiled. <coughs> He bowed, and in a moment leaped among the lions wild. The leap was quick, return was quick, he has regained his place. Then threw the glove, but not with love, right in the lady's face. By heaven, said Francis, rightly done, and rose from where he sat. No love, quoth he, but vanity, says love, a task like that. Um, one of my favorite parts is that first line where she drops the glove and just does the drop, smile. It's like just imagine the, the orbit. A little thing coming off of the teeth, and she just gives him that adorable little look. Um, vanity. Do you guys know what the word vanity means? Because it's going to play a big role. Wash. Um, it means like beauty. No, but a good good guess. Uh, I have a lot of vanity, um, and there's a good chance no one would argue that. But people would argue my level of beauty, which hurts me. But I'm I'm okay with that. Jay Blanc. Not love. Not love. The op not, not quite. I do have a lot of not love. Hatred. But it's hard. I do have a lot of hatred. But those are all words that do describe me and actually don't hurt. But I'm okay with that. Can you get? You're evil. I am also evil, but not where vanity comes from. Um, if it helps, there's a, for those of you who watch the Smurfs, uh, there's a Smurf called Vanity Smurf. Uh, and he always walks around with something in his hand because of his name Vanity Smurf. Trayson? Okay, so you... You do have love, but it's to no one else except yourself. Is correct. Vanity is, is, is when all you do is care about yourself. You, you think you're all that in a bag of chips. It's why the fact that I always talk about me, because I'm the most awesome thing in the room, whichever room I go into. And so that's what vanity is. It's when you're very full of yourself. Um, I have a thing in my room at home that's called a vanity. What is it? It's a dresser drawer with a big mirror on it. Right. Why is it called a vanity? Because you sit in front of it and just stare at yourself? <laughs> Nailed it. So that's why it's called a vanity. Vanity Smurf walks around carrying something in his hand. What does he carry in his hand the whole time, Wash? A mirror. A mirror. Yeah. 
because he's always looking at himself. That's and he vanity has a flower in and so it's the, yeah, And he's got a flower. He's a very pretty right? he uh, And so that's what the vanity is. So that's going to play a big role coming up here, too. Can you get? Um, if you wrote this poem and you put the count, my lover is brave as brave can be, would you still count it awesome because you wrote it? Well, yeah, that is for like the loophole. It would probably cause um, reality as we know it to collapse in upon itself. So it's kind of weird because I would never write something like that. If I did write something like that, it would be awesome. Something like that could never be awesome. You're like, my brain hurt. Reality <laughs> collapsed. Jay Blanc? Actually, he didn't write it. James she said if I did. Oh. Okay. But yes, you're correct. So she throws. Yes, that's fancy. Good, good use of Google, dear. He she throws the glove down into the bottom area, and what does he do? Throws it. Throws it right back. Well, no, he jumps down and gets nicely it. Nicely done. First he she gives there's a little smiley face. He jumps down, grabs the glove, jumps back up with the glove, and then what does he do with the glove? Throws that in her face. Smack <laughs> <laughs> right into her face. <laughs> uh, and of course the question comes up, why does he go smacky smacky facey facey <coughs> as opposed to handy handy huggy huggy? Paige? Um, because he thinks the girl is being really selfish and she only cares about herself. Nice, well done. He realizes she's not a very nice person because once again, if you love someone, you don't try to get them killed. You don't go to that special person that you like and like, here's a note. It's like, if you like me, can you go out on the highway and go dodge cars? Would you love me? Like, no, you're crazy. You don't love me. Like, no, you're nuts. There's a difference. So that's sort of the idea. But then, Mr. Romeo, why does he go down there in the first place? Good question. If he realizes that she's nuts and full of vanity, why jump down there and grab the glove in the first place and even do it? Why not, as soon as she just drops it, be like, no, you crazy chick. Why bother going down, Mo? So he can insult her when he gets back up? That's part of it, because insulting people is fun. But, Johnny? So that she gets her hopes up, and then he can crush them. Getting closer, that goes back to the insulting thing. D-View? Um, because he jumped down there, and then, like, mid-flight on the way down, he's like, oh, wait. <laughs> he, he knew before jumping, but think about this, if you're the girls watching, and you see the fact that that girl drops it down there, and you're like, ooh, and then all of a sudden, he goes, no, I, I ain't doing that. What do you think about him? Wash? He's really arrogant. Nice, done. But if he jumps down and grabs it, and then comes back up, and then instead of giving it to her, slaps her across the face, now what do you think about him? But the idea, more the awesome. So the idea being is that he also wants to get a date at some point, and if he just looks down there and goes, "Yeah, I'm not going to do it," then he comes across as a wussy, because you're like, "I'm not jumping down there." There's a bunch of scary lions and the little bits. I mean, I'm not happy. I'm not going to hang out down there. And so you have the lions killing. So he jumps down there to prove I'm not a wussy. It's not because I'm scared to go down there. So he jumps down there, ninja punch, ninja punch, ninja flip, and comes back up. All the girls are like. When they look at him, they're like, oh, I wish he was mine. Then all of a sudden, he's like, slap! And they're like, oh, he could be mine! And now all of a sudden, they're just throwing phone numbers at him. And he's just like, oh, phone number! And so that's why he does it. And then hopefully another girl who's not total cray-cray will end up asking him out. Johnny? No. Um, I have two things to say. Yes? Um, there weren't phones back then. Yes, but they still had phone numbers. It was very ironic. <laughs> <laughs> they all throw and their gloves um, um, Fact check. Weren't they be throwing gloves? They might be, but they were afraid it's going to miss and go in the flying pit and then only get slapped. So that's why they throw uh, the, the phone numbers. It makes so much more sense. They don't know what a phone number is. I told you. No, they have them. It was just very confusing. <laughs> <laughs> just when you call them, no one answered this. It was just always crazy that. Now, jumping to your notebook. We're not done. We're going to keep going with more learning. So go to here. And then you already have that. So then turn to that page. Mo? How does someone jump that high? Yeah. Oh, be like a ninja jump. Ninja jump. Oh. Right there in the ninja jump part. You got, they, they, they invented ninja jump right after they invented phone numbers. The way it worked out. Alright. What we're going to be going through and doing is 
setting up the joy of notes. Since we have a test coming up in a week and a half, because we're almost done with poetry and ready to move on. Because uh, next week is our last week of poetry. So I'm going to double check that you guys understand a few of the words and terms that you have them in front of you. One, with a way you had to do three lines for each one. We're going to say what the word is, a definition of it, an example of it, and then you skip a line. And how many total words are there going to be? Eleven. Nicely done. So if you ask me later, what am I going to tell you? Not eleven. Yep, twenty, thirty, <laughs> fifty. Depends how many times you ask. Three hundred. First word, simile. So our first word, simile. Malia, what's the definition of a simile? Something that compares two things using like or as. Nailed it. I put compares two nouns, the same idea. Compares two nouns using like or as. Simile, compares two nouns using like or as. For your example, whatever example you want to do, come up with a simile. I went for, my shirt is as black as an eye after I jab it. What? Wow. <laughs> Uh, not, not my shirt, of course. That's <laughs> my shirt is as pink as a baby's belly after you smack it. That's <laughs> that's See, I didn't jab you in the eye. Completely nonviolent. Or if you don't like either of mine, you can come up with your own. Thank you. You're welcome, <laughs> Cat. It sounds like you're saying like your shirt turns black as an eye when you jab the shirt. Could be. I have very magical shirts. <laughs> For those of you who finished simile, <coughs> there's a good chance you can already figure out what number two is going to be. Simile's cousin, which is... <laughs> We're scared to say... Metaphor! Metaphor! And that's where the skipping or doing numbers, somewhere where you can tell where one ends and the next begins so they don't get all scribbled up together. Purple What's a metaphor? Compares two things by seeing one thing is another. Nailed it. Compares two nouns by saying one noun is the other one. Once again, I'll give you an example. If you don't like my example, you're welcome to use your own example. I went for my pants are the velvety lengths of the ocean. <clears throat> when I wrote this video, I was wearing blue pants. I'm not wearing blue pants today, <coughs> so it doesn't make too much sense. I'll have to try and change it. Um, my pants are the dark depths of my soul. There you go. That's a little better for you. Or whatever boring a four you want to come up with. Johnny? Is it like, could the definition also be like comparing two nouns of that using like or as? It can be, but that's not nearly as strong of a definition because you're doing it by saying one thing is the other. My pants are my dark soul. Your hair is a dead chipmunk. So you're saying one thing is the other thing. It's not your hair, it's someone else's hair. Okay, good. It's just a random statement. Your, your hair is a lovely crop of grain upon a field. Or whatever works. Too much hair drill. Three! Idiom! I don't know, it feels like we just did these. Do you not remember idiom? Friday? Yes, I do. I do. Oh, tomorrow! We'll get to and finish out the rest of our learning. Good job, chillins. Yes, because we're going to have it done by the end of class. Yeah, so unless you don't pay attention and go to your happy place, then you should be fine.